Hello, my name is Iman Blow. I am the founder of the Aspire to Inspire Initiative, a performance consultant and a former award-winning student athlete. I am here with you today to have an interview in conversation with Keith Smart. This interview will be a mental health and mindset interview where we focus on topics such as mental health, mental hygiene, and high performance mindsets. So let's get straight into it. Let me introduce you to Keith Smart. Keith Smart is a three-time Olympian and Olympic silver medalist. He was raised in Brooklyn, New York, alongside his sister, who is also an Olympic silver medalist. Keith had delayed success when he first started out, but by college, he was able to accomplish two individual NCAA titles. After college in 2004, he rose to number one world ranking for the first time for any American fencer in history. Keith now still resides in Brooklyn and is happily raising a family and working at the intersection of technology and fitness. Let's start this conversation with Keith. The first question I always pose in these types of interviews is, what was your introduction to mental health as a whole? And what was your introduction to mental hygiene? Um, and if you're not familiar with the term, you know, everyone listening, mental hygiene is the positive impact that you can have on your mental health or the habits that you have to promote positive mental health. So Keith, uh, what was your introduction? Yeah. Uh... Well, thanks for having me, Aman. Um, I think mental health is super important. I was first introduced to mental health when I was probably 12 or 13 years old from my first coach, Aladar Kugler. Um, he was a, a sports psychologist at Columbia University, as well as a um, fencing coach, an amazing fencing coach in all three weapons. And when one of the first uh, practices that he led, it was all about breathing and uh, visualization. So he wrote a ton of books on like the importance of sports psychology, and he would uh, weave these practices into uh, my lessons. And like, you know, if I would mess up or anything, he would like, sir, take a step back and breathe. And so, um, that was like the beginning of this uh, path of uh, mental health that he got me on. And as I grew older and could uh, incorporate more of his practice, his, um, his uh, theories and practices, we went deeper and deeper into uh, visualization and, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, talking through exercises of like what it takes to like, maintain calm, bringing my, um, being able to like face the challenges of traveling and competing. Um, and then he also introduced me to mental hygiene, which was also very important. Um, just being in a, a sport like fencing and combat sport, uh, understanding like you have to have resets. So part of what he would say to us was, um, you need to uh, take time away from the sport. So you can't train 365 days a year and you can't uh, expect to train 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So I want you guys to like be balanced in terms of have other hobbies, as well as um, we always had to take one month off, no fencing. And it's, it's probably pretty foreign concept these days. But, and what he would say in that month is like, I don't want you to even think about picking up the blade. I want you to reset mentally and physically. And part of the reset mentally was like, don't look at the point standings, don't think about anything else, just have fun. And um, day to day when I was training over those 11 months, um, a, a lot of it was just about like incorporating like those breathing exercises, and um, and for my mental hygiene, as well as just figuring out like what made me happy, uh, whether that's like for me, it's like reading books, read, reading magazines, um, like it, I could kind of immerse myself into that world, uh, as well as um, listening to music, uh, things that are really immersive. And I felt that was 
most uh, beneficial for my mental hygiene. I just find it amazing how every time I speak to you, like I've known you since I started fencing 15 years ago, I find out something new and you know astonishing. Um, but particularly to point to something that you said, I think the idea that you had a coach who also was not only highly educated in the idea of like mental training or mental health, but was able to incorporate that into your training is foreign today because it's really, you know, it's really hard to have both great, you know, fencing skills or athletic training skills and mental skills. But especially, you know, when you were fencing, you know, 10 plus years ago and, and even before that when you started. Um, but it, it's incredible, wonderful to hear that. My next question for you, I guess, kind of piggybacks off of that. When you were going into the Olympic Games in 2008, leading up to that time, what mindset did you have as you were preparing to uh, get to that event? And then what was your mindset after 2008 where you, you, know, you had decided to retire? What mindset did you have going out of that experience and going into it? So the pre-Olympics were building up to it. Um, my mindset was like, this was going to be my last Games. So I wanted it, and I had already made two Olympic Games, and I wanted to be in, I wanted to leave no stone unturned. So in fact, I found myself leaning on all of the um, mental exercises I had been taught as a teenager from Aladar about the breathing, the visualization. Um, Olympic qualification is extremely stressful in any sport. And in fencing, it's very unique because you're competing against your teammates as well as competing against international players. So keeping that balance uh, of like, you know, I need to train with these guys as much as I need to beat them at times and and staying um, connected uh, was very important. So I did a lot of uh, visualizations of I'm going to be on the strip. It's going to be 14, 12. I need to understand what touch they're going to do versus what touch. How do I feel? My blood is racing. And that helped a lot. Um, what also made it very interesting um, in 2008 for me personally was I also was very sick at the tail end of the uh, of the uh, uh, qualification. So um, I was hospitalized and and I was told in the hospital I would never fence again, let alone uh, be able to do anything physical due to this blood disease that I contracted. And when I was in the hospital. Um, I somebody gave me a book about pos the po the power of positive thinking, and I I read it obviously because I had nothing to do in, in intensive care, and uh, and it and it worked wonders because then I started also being thankful. I was like, I'm so blessed and I'm so thankful for all I've gotten, all I've achieved, that traveled all over the world, and I'm gonna get out of this situation. I gotta be positive. I can't be buy into the naysayers of the doctors and nurses. And taking that positive mindset really, I believe, accelerated my physical uh, recovery. And so I, I then adopted that positive mindset throughout the last two or three months of the Olympic qualification, where even though my mother died like a month before the Games or two months before the Games, I was just very positive about the memories and the joys I had with her versus, um, you know, could have, it should have thrown most people off track in terms of training, but I was like, you know what, let's be positive and think about all the blessings I've had with her. And this has been an incredible journey. And um, I, I was very grateful. Now, after the games, and, and now, now I'll just like, kind of like give you a bit of an abbreviated version at the games, it was strictly about like breathing, controlling my breath, even on the competing for um, the medal, um, you know, uh, 44, 44. I was like, I got it. If I'm, if I'm too excited, I can't think. So I was like, just calm down, breathe, think and relax. You've been here before. And again, these are all the exercises I had been taught when I was like 13, 14, 15 years old from Alinar. Um, after the games, I kind of knew it was over and um, for me. And I also knew a lot of my teammates in 
bunch of sports go through what's called an Olympic depression. You know, they've kind of built up this huge uh, experience and then it, it just ends. Like the closing ceremonies is literally what it is. It closes and uh, and people are like, oh my God, they're on the flight home and, and you know, they might've won Olympic medals. They might've not, whatever. And everybody seems like very depressed uh, because they know they won't experience that again for four more years, if ever. And for me, again, like just kind of, I had that experience in 2004 coming in fourth and I was very depressed, very sad. And I was like, oh my God, like life sucks. And I realized, um, you know, after the games, I need to be just as thankful and just as positive and blessed as I was going into the game. And just leaning on that positive mindset of like, wow, Keith, you've had a great experience, uh, an amazing experience. And, um, you know, let's let's start working towards that next chapter, that next challenge. And uh, Benson will always be a part of you, but uh, let's see what that next challenge is going to look like. So I kind of like re- leaned into it and uh, have just been very positive about like taking on these new challenges in life. And uh, I feel very blessed just to be here. So. Thank you for sharing that very clearly difficult um, and slightly tragic experience, but also your inspirational journey through it. Um, Something that you said that I really am holding on to is the idea of positivity, bringing you into new challenges and also really helping you get over you know, monumental challenges in your life. I mean, I feel like everyone can take away from that idea of even when things are incredibly challenging or distressing, positivity could possibly give you a, a mental pathway through those experiences and, and like for you to a very you know successful point in your life. Thank you for sharing. Thank you a lot. Um, my last question, uh, again, kind of leads into what you were saying now you know today you're no longer a current competitive athlete but obviously you're still out here thriving and and striving for new challenges and successes as you said what is something that you currently do to positively impact your mental health yeah i I love this question so um i uh, i do a few things um first i uh continue with like saying my positive affirmations of like wow I'm just so blessed. I have two healthy kids, a loving wife, great friends and family. What more can I ask for? Um, but then obviously everybody has good days and bad days. Uh, and on those challenging days, I I like to either, if weather permitting, to take long walks because that helps like clear my head and like just, and then if I, if I don't have that opportunity, I will, um, you know, take a, like make it myself a cup of tea and then just like do some like uh resetting of like whatever experiences i've had of either like reading a book reading a magazine or just listening to some music and 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 taking quite frankly a a hot bath and you know i've read recently like a lot of um like um uh, romans and like there's just a lot of uh positive natures of like taking hot baths or sitting i have access to steam room so I'll also sit in like a a steam room and just uh you know have like those uh I like to say like those negative energies like just flush out of me. So it's a little bit um you know uh of a practical experience for me where I need to do something a little bit more tangible. So either that long walk or um you know a hot bath or a hot shower to like really like just flush things out of me. I can really appreciate how a lot of the things that you've said, like the examples that you gave, aren't super difficult to start or to accomplish, but as you said, can provide you with a lot of relief. So I think they're very, you know, relatable and attainable ways to just invest in that mental recovery, as you said, or like have mental positivity and health. Um, Well, that is the last question of this interview. I am so grateful for you being here and sharing with everyone. Um, 
And that would be all for this interview. I hope everyone has an amazing day. And thank you for tuning in.